Kill me! Put me out of my misery! Just kill me, please! Hello everyone, I'm TG, and this is your home for Garbage Gameplay. Now, ever since the introduction of the Nikolai patch, I've been trying to find a Spencer build that I really enjoy. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of viable options out there. You have Supercore, Hypercharge, Cooling Fans, but I wanted to find something that was just a little bit different. I always felt playing Spencer just wasn't fun. Even if you're steamrolling survivors match after match after match, he just seems so... I don't know, autopilot, I guess. But alas, after doing some experimenting, I think I found a build that's unlike any other I've seen. I call it Hyper EIS Spencer. It focuses on cycling cards as fast as possible, dominating the environment, and using D-Field as your primary means of damage. And believe me, if you're using this build, you're going to get a lot of D-Fields out on the map. Sometimes you can even squeeze out two in Area 1. Now, this build's going to look a little crazy, and man, it is labor intensive, but if you're on the ball, it works. So let's check it out. To start off, for our D-Field variant, you're going to choose Generator over Clone. And I know Clone may seem better, but Generator is what's going to make it so you can drop D-Fields ASAP. How it works is every time you use a skill card, D-Fields cooldown is reduced, and since our deck is packed with low-cost cards, that means you'll be throwing them out constantly, not having to worry about bioenergy. For Umbrella Tech, using Deadbolt is key. Because not only is it going to make it so your door locks to level 3 immediately, it also lowers all EIS cooldowns by 1 second when you use a skill card. Meaning while you're cycling through your deck, reducing your D-Fields cooldown, you're also reducing the cooldown on lights and doors as well. Your EIS cooldowns are going to be so low with this build, you'll be relocking level 3 doors as soon as survivors break them open. Lastly, for bioactivation, recharge is where it's at. Because as your EIS cooldowns are already going to be so low, you're going to be interacting with the environment so often you're never ever going to be hurting for bioenergy. You're probably going to be sitting at over 6 constantly. Until, of course, Area 3. But that's where Hypercharge comes into play. For our first exclusive skill, we're going to be using Advanced OS Mod. And yes, you heard that right, not Mod Recycler. This card makes it so your EIS cooldowns are reduced when your bioenergy is 6 or more which, believe it or not, it will be often. Once you hit Area 3, you can start dumping this card, because it only costs 3. And lastly, we're going to need Hypercharge. Because once we get to Area 3, you aren't going to have so much to interact with anymore. This card will be pretty much your only means of reducing your D-Fields cooldown. I so badly wanted to find a use for Overcharge mod, but I just can't for the life of me make it work. If you guys have any ideas, please let me know. I'd love to try a build that uses it. On to our equipment, which is going to look a little wacky, but just roll with me on this. I'm using Systems Maintenance 2 and 1 to further reduce D-Fields cooldown in conjunction with Spencer's Generator variant. This is what's going to help get those D-Fields out non-stop, particularly if the group is disorganized and you're stalling them left and right with your deadbolt. I'm also going to be using Advanced Processors 3 and 2. These are the thing that make the build work, really, as they provide a constant flat EIS reduction all throughout the game. Now this is where it's important to mention that this build is primarily an Area 1 and 2 build. Since once you get to Area 3, things aren't going to be as rosy. You really want to stop the survivors in Area 2 at all costs. Not to say you can't win in Area 3, but it ain't going to be no cakewalk. So for my deck, it may seem like I just went a little bit crazy, but I assure you I did not. The only mod I'm using is Generator Mod Small, and that's what's going to help keep my bio energy above 6 the majority of the game. And it's also just going to lend to Advanced OS Mod's effectiveness. I'm also going to be using Air Gun and Immobilizing Rounds. And Immobilizing Round is probably going to be the most important card in this deck. Because that and Lake Hole Trap to a certain extent are what are going to be setting up survivors for the D-Field finishers. I'm also using a couple of cheap traps. I have Tracker and Landmine. Just for a little bit of extra damage and just to keep them looking at the ground throughout the game. For my creatures, I have a Zombie Dog, Crawler, Zombie, and Zombie Infectious. It's nothing too powerful, but enough to just spread a little bit of chaos and infection throughout the map. My preset also has Infectious Zombies and Traps in it, and all that is just going to be adding to the pressure. You'll notice nothing in this deck costs more than 3, and that's because we want to be firing off as many cards as possible as fast as possible. I just absolutely love this build because everything meshes together so well. Everything has its place. There's no dead cards where it's, oh god, I just gotta get rid of that, see what else I can get. And best of all, nobody's expecting it. So, we're gonna check out a match I played a little bit earlier using this build, and I really hope you enjoy it. 
Well, this team is kind of all over the map, isn't it? Not too excited about that Martin, though. I'll tell you that for free. I think Casino is probably my favorite map for this build, though. Lots to interact with, even in Area 3. Now, they do have a Tyrone, though, so this might be a little tricky-dicky. We shall see. So I'm going to start out by turning off some lights, locking some doors, just building up that bio energy, working on my D-field cooldown. Yeah, what are you doing out here, Marty? You shouldn't be out by yourself. Oh, wrong card. Alright, so we'll start tossing out some cards. Re up on the bio energy. The main thing about this build is you want to always be doing something. You're hopping around on cameras, interacting with everything that you can. There should be no downtime. You're not just loading up a room with bio leech like a hypercharge dispenser would. Uh, you aren't really looking for a solid built up force like that. You're trying to stall them at every corner, spreading out your army. I mean, you still want to defend key areas, of course, but it's more about making the survivors deal with something at every turn. Stop that, Jeff. Yeah. Child could have found that. Easy, girl. Now, they're still mostly up front. Martin's venturing a little farther. Being a little bolder than a Martin should. So we're gonna try to slow his progress. And I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm gonna jump in. Main reason you don't want to do this is that, while you do, you aren't really using any cards. You're not interacting with the EIS. So you're not reducing your D-field cooldown. At the very least, we're going to draw their focus just a little bit. So, if you notice, my D-field's halfway ready. Probably would have been about three quarters if I was uh, just a little more aggressive with my cards. Easy, Marty. Okay. Got some energy back. And I'm going to load up a little here. Keep them occupied. Blow him with some air. <laughs> or try to, I guess. But I think it's time to load up the back and start with the aggression. And I definitely don't want to forget my EIS during this. Honestly, it's more important than just about anything else. Oh, nice little ivy there. And, yep, looks like D-Field's just about up. So I'm going to capitalize on that whenever I get a chance. Okay, so here's exactly what we want. We want the immobilized D-Field combo. God damn it. There we go. I got Tyrone. Would have been nice to get at least two, but oh well. Just lock him in. Go get some of our bio energy back. Don't worry too much if they res someone in Area 1. Still lots of time. Now I'm going to put these guys right on Martin's trap, so the stun will be finished whenever the team gets back. Up. Yeah, we got January locking down behind a door. Can't have that bullshit. This is only an appetizer for the coming tastes. Now let's see if I can't get her with this. Ah, oh, Tyrone got away though. Okay, so they're on their way back. I'm just gonna build up my bio energy now for area two. But I think should be able to do just a little more damage here. I will not grant you the luxury of choice. Yeah, just blast him in the ass. Oh, nice. Now I'm basically just gonna wait out the clock till area two. 
I could use this top to drop a few cards to D-Field, but uh, this game I just want to be really ready off the bat in Area 2 to uh, D-Up Yorick. So, not too bad for the first zone. Three minutes on the clock when all's said and done. Like I said, I could have been more aggressive with my cards, and uh, in doing that I probably could have got a second D-Field out, but... That's all right. I hope you do not think you managed this against my. So I kind of want to see what they're gonna do, which way they're gonna go before I load up too much. Now York's here. If it would just let me place. And I'm probably gonna end up using that flash before I want to, just because I have to free up my hand. I want to save that immobilizing shot. Dig in Yurik as best I can. Yeah, I think that'll be good. So, just gonna go get my bioenergy back. Lock the doors, turn off the lights. You know the game. Now, what are they up to out here? And my D field's up already. Perfect. How did that not hit? Time for some sticky goo. Oh, come on. Iframes. Silly. Silly, silly, silly. Alright, come on, big boy. Oh, really wish that shot him up instead of down. Fucking Tyrone, just catching all the breaks. It's alright. Got some gooey D redemption here. And they're grouping up, so I think I'm gonna jump into Yurik. Just keep him alive a little bit longer. Oh, damn that grenade. Whoa. Chill running the H2 canisters or what? Oh, did Tyrone just second win there? Excellent. Now, I'm not really focusing on my EIS like I should, especially since I got my advanced OS mod. Just stuck in my old ways. Alright, let's get on that. Cover my tracks up you here. Think I would let you have this, did you? All right, a little grenade action. Ah, only hit one of them. My accuracy today is suspect. Oh, and you know what? Should have used that on Jill. That's all right. You win this round, Gilliam. You win this round. So if they come up this way first, I think that's game. My D field's just about ready again, and we got more than enough to stop them, I think. Now let's just go get a little bit of bio energy back. And yes, they are coming up this way, which is excellent. Now, since Bioenge is not really a problem, I'm going to go ahead and immobilize through this. Try to get T with another D. He's just soaking up the D today. Come on. No, not fast enough. That's poor placement on my part. Not a problem, though. They're just too disorganized, I think. That's where this build really shines. I wasn't nearly as aggressive as I could have been, and you can just imagine how many D fields you can get out if you are. With a little practice and some refinement, I think I can definitely say this is my go-to Spencer build. I love it. Yeah. So, that's Hyper EIS Spencer. A lot of fun. A lot more engaging than the Spencers we're used to. I think I can finally enjoy playing as him again. So, I'm TG. If you like what you saw, you know what to do. If not, eh. Keep it sleazy.